Chief, welcome to KQED Newsroom. It's a pleasure to be here again. I want to ask you first about the letter that you sent recently to the Attorney General and the head of Homeland Security, uh, saying that immigration agents uh, appear to be stalking undocumented immigrants in trial courts. That was a strong word, stalking. Uh, tell me, how did you decide to use that word and what, what was the tipping point for you? Thank you. It is a strong word. I chose it intentionally. I created and ran a domestic violence court, the first of its kind in Sacramento County back in 1998. And so I really understand what stalking means and the fear that it instills in the victim. And so I use that word because it is what's happening. And it may not be what their exact intention is, but that's how victims feel. That's how the public begins to feel about that kind of behavior. The tipping point was reading more and more and more about this happening nationally and then in Pasadena. What happened in Pasadena? In Pasadena, uh, a defense attorney, I think his name is Mr. Chaidez, reported that as he was leaving the courthouse, ICE agents came and arrested his client. Came as a big surprise out of nowhere and on the steps of the courthouse, which gave me great concern because courthouses are where we come and where we encourage people to come for due process and justice, where they report as witnesses, as victims, and that will have a chilling effect. What uh, are you hoping the letter accomplishes? What do you want ICE to do? I want ICE to talk about their policy, maybe include some of us or not, but at least take into account that this enforcement tactics in the courthouses has a detrimental effect on safety in the communities because people are no longer going to report. They're not going to cooperate. That means victimization will go unreported in the communities and the communities are less safe and they won't come to court because they'll look at the court as bad guys. ICE says that uh, these uh, are bad guys that they're arresting. Uh, by and large, dangerous people, and that they do this only as a last resort, and they blame sanctuary city laws, local laws and the Trust Act statewide that limits cooperation between local government and federal immigration agents. Is, is that a, 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 an excuse? Is that, does that resonate? Well, the first thing that I take from that response is they have obviously stepped up enforcement activities. That, to me, is an admission of enforcement activity increases, unlike what was happening in the Obama administration. Secondly, it tells me, yes, they are targeting courthouses for whatever reasons they may have. And third, their reasons to me are, well, a justification for why they're going into the courthouses. And again, I accept all that, they've admitted that, but the point is the consequences continues to make communities unsafe and people will not report, they will not cooperate, there will be fewer witnesses against bad guys, and I, I can't believe that that would be the intent of their actions if they thought about that. What are you hearing from other chief justices around the, around the country? I've heard, for example, that the Washington State Chief Justice Fairhurst, I believe, has issued a letter along the similar requests and claims as mine, asking ICE to cease and desist. Additionally, I know that the New Mexico Superior Court is hearing many issues and complaints, and they're determining what they can and want to do in this situation. I've read about it in Colorado. I've read about it in Texas. And I know that the chiefs are thinking about this. Um, the courts are supposed to be above politics. How concerned are you that this sort of blends in with what's happening in the national political scene? I think for thinking people, they'll realize that this is not about politics. This is about a co-equal branch of government, the judicial branch, asking the executive branch to rethink its enforcement tactics in our branch, because this, these tactics will undermine the public trust and confidence that the judiciary relies on in order to keep communities safe. I want to talk about changes on your court. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been three new justices out of the seven since you got there in 2011, and now there's going to be a fourth. Yes. Um, what, what impact does that have? Well, it has tremendous impact. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that I also was new. I came first in early 2011. Justice Liu came some months later. And thereafter, we had the honor of having uh, Justice Cuellar and Justice Kruger. It's a tremendous change. There is a learning curve just in the culture and tradition and the approach to statewide cases in a highest court. And so we will be once again adjusting and uh, learning and teaching from each other. So it's going to be major change. And now you'll know that there's five out of seven justices have changed position now since 2011. If you're not careful, you're going to become the senior justice. It's not that frightening. <laughs> <laughs> what about diversity? I know this, the Supreme Court is quite diverse, uh, but statewide still, 70% uh, of trial court and 76% of appeals court judges 
are white. Um, what difference does that make? Well, I think we do have strength and diversity. But at the same time, California has historically, in the judiciary, been ahead of the country in our rulings in standing up for civil rights and in landmark decisions long before any other state or the United States Supreme Court has acted. On the other hand, I would say that our latest survey shows that diversity is improving and becoming greater in our courts. The, uh, women have increased to something like 33%. Um, white males now are at 68%. Uh, Latino, Hispanic judges are now at 10%. Now it's true Asian Americans and African Americans and all others have not yet reached double digits, but this governor has been very proactive in diversifying the judicial branch. Quick question, if justice is supposed to be blind, what difference does it make? Because what the just, racial and ethnic and gender makeup is. Because justice is supposed to be justice for all, access for all. So that means all representative types, all of us to bring a unique experience and our views and experience to the table. All right, Chief Justice Tani Kantil-Saka-Uwe, thanks for coming in. Thank you.